Hello everybody, hope you all having another blessed day, and for today's video I am back on Dornbook to share with you guys my new and improved and updated Dark World deck profile after the last Battles of Legend has come out. Mainly because after this last pack has come out, we got probably a really good War Extender, up there where I would say probably Junk Forward being Fire Flint Lady. Now, let's go quickly through this new card to add to the deck and help me change up everything. So it says if you could just control a warrior monster, you can spell summon this card from your hand, and you can send this card from field to grave, but it spells some one level four or lower warrior monster from your hand, and it cannot be targeted by your opponent's card effects that turn. Okay, you're going to use each of these effects once per turn. So one that's already a ton of use that this card has in Dark Wars. One, it's an extender, let's get one other warrior out in the field, which is very easy. Two, it can just be a normal summon. So for example, if I had Photon Thrasher, guess what? Photon Thrasher could be spell summon. This could technically be spell summon, and also be normal summon if I need it to be. And also lets me get, let's say, I have a normal summon near space connector, have this for extender, and I have Sublimation Knight in my hand. I'll be able to get probably like four monsters on the field just for that play. That's very, very good in today's meta. But yeah, now I just want to go through and talk through every card and kind of what I have in the deck now and kind of ratios I have for everything, okay? Because there are some changes about every location due to what the meta is looking like for right now. So, starting off, we have Free Ash Blossom. And this is now a 9 hand trap based deck, because I feel like hand traps are really poor in it. And if you know, all those other variants of Dark Warriors out there, a lot of them I see are just about getting a combo out, and that's fine and all. But if you're trying to place out a competitive standard, you know, you need to understand if you're going to go second, a lot of times you're not going to win that dice throw. You need to be able to play going second. So, I'm playing what I think are the three best hand traps currently. You know, on the side deck, you see a no hand trap, but you know, it doesn't help as well as all the other ones against most matchups. So Star is Ash Blossom, I still think it's probably the best hand trap in the game of meta right now. Then because it can hit almost every single combo variant of the deck. Only thing it doesn't hit now is the new Numeron engine, which is a very broken engine, and why I already talked about in the previous video why Zex will probably and hopefully gets banned next list. But this can hit decks, let's say, I'm pretty sure it can hit Outlitch if the whole curse of Ed Edland. I'm pretty sure it can stop that card. It can hit well, we can hit the Invoked Engine, it can hit any Surge like Fossil Dig, it can hit my own deck, it can hit a Needle Fiber, it hits everything in today's meta. Only thing it doesn't hit again is Numeron. So, just because it doesn't hit one really good engine, it hits still all the other parts of the meta. So, I think you should still play this card at free. It's still very good. Yes, we do have Fire Friend Flavia at free. There's no reason not to play this card at free if you're playing any kind of warrior based deck. Even I could say like heroes, you're playing heroes, this could still be a very good deck. It's easy to summon, it's a warrior extender. No reason not to play it. So yeah, Fire Friend Lady at free. One of the best extenders in the game. But for Bex Extenders, next is still free, junk four. I still think this is the best one in my opinion. Mainly because it's always gonna be alive, it's either a normal summon, or as a, a special summon using its effect. Because you go to start this card out as your first card. If I don't have Photon Thrasher in my hand, and it's going to be a summon that's going to normal summon any other warrior. Or, if I have Photon Thrasher, I can then use Photon Thrasher's effect, and then just normal summon Junk for it and go for it. But, you know, Fire Front Lady is still very good. Similar reasons, okay? Next, Near Space Connector. I still always say this is probably the best normal summon in the game. It is for a one-card combo, and also if it, it has to bait out the Ash. If they don't bait out the Ash with this, you know they're going to lose it, because you get this special summon Near Space of Aqua Dolphin, and then snipe the Ash out of the hand. Snap the ghost or snap everything. So, with New Space Connector, it's going to always bait out the hand traps, except for Nibiru. And then, if you know your opponent has Nibiru, you can try to play around it in some different variants of this deck. It's very hard for this deck to play around Nibiru, but there are some options, especially in a side deck. So, next, speaking of Nibiru, is free Nibiru, because, you know, I do make this deck in case I do go second, and this is still a very good card that hits all the meta deck still, except for, again, Numeron. Because new ones only have to summon three new more monsters and go into Zexel, join four summons, and then you can't Nibiru them. But if they do think you don't have the Nibiru and summon four new more monsters and then go into Zexel that way, that is the fifth summon, and you can still drop Nibiru on it. So it's still a very good card. It still hits all the Synchro, Crystal and Neo Fiber variants, which is still probably the best decks out there. Next is going to be Photon Thrasher. You can see I'm playing this free, and I don't play Blue Mountain Butterfly. Mainly because Blue Mountain Butterfly to me, especially when I was testing out at my locals last week, was a brick. Because the problem is, if I cannot, if I don't normal summon a warrior, I can't play this card. For example, I drew Photon Thrasher and Blue Mountain Butter Sprite at the same time. Yes, I got the Blue Mountain Butter Sprite, but I can't do anything with, I can do anything with Blue Mountain Butter Sprite, even though I have Photon Thrasher on the field, because it wasn't normal summoned. So, I decided to avoid that whole complication altogether. I saw I just take out the two Blue Mountain Butter Sprite, and I put in three Photon Thrashers. Instead, 
You know, I could play the Super Quantum, but I still like this one more make this as 2100 attack. Alright. So still very good extender, and it can play off with a whole Junk 4, it can play off with the Firefront Lady, Horde of Speed, normal extender with Near Space Connector, Horde Next Card, Supplementation Knight, which is again is one of our one card combos. There are seven one card combos in this deck, as I'm counting it as that. Anything else, you know, you can still pair it off with two warriors, but there's seven. And this is going to be uh, combos four through six, because you play free Sublimation Knight, which basically lets you uh, equip it with a uh, Squeak Knight. And Squeak Knight can just put some in itself, and you have it slotted, isolated that way. So yeah, still a very good card. Not as good as Connector, because the Connector still lets you snipe a hand trap, but this is still very good. Next is Armageddon Knight. Which is a really good card. You can always pair it up with a ex Warrior Extender and you have combo that way and kind of extends it in that way. But you know, this is the main kind of how you get into the whole combo. Because you just send your Plague Spreader, your Sephiroth's Elite, your your Cloak. Sends everything using this card. So, very good in the deck. And this is something like I would actually say if it gets DD Crowed, Ashed, you're going to be in a world of hurt, okay? Because if you can't get the recurrent effect of Armageddon Knight by spamming it back to the field multiple times, you're not going to win for this deck. Next, I set first elite part of the combo. We still have Duck Greffer because this is how you unbreak yourself if you accidentally do draw a Plax Road Zombie. You know, it does happen. If it's 50 card variant deck, you can still draw a Plax Road Zombie. And usually, you know, you can just try to discard that by chance. So sometimes you don't have that opportunity, but Duck Greffer lets you do that. For example, I still have my combo. Instead of special summoning out Armageddon Knight, you're going to special summon out Duck Greffer, then pitch the Plax the Plax from your deck, or from your hand to the graveyard to send Armageddon Knight. And through this whole change of combo, you still will be able to do your full combo. So if you're ever playing Dark Warriors, you have to still play Dark Greffer. However, if we do get the Struder back, if the Nearfire gets banned or some variant of that, I could say you can talk you can ditch Dark Greffer along with Plex Road Zombie and it'll be better. Next I'm now playing one Aqua Dolphin. Mainly because I do not want too many normal summons in this deck. Last time I had this deck, I think I had 50 card and I showed you guys. I run into a problem that I keep on having to get too many normal summons. For example, I have Sublimation Knight and Aqua Dolphin in my hand. And I can't go for both of those combos. So I decided to cut back and I only have six normal summons technically I want to get out. I still have the options like a normal summon Armageddon Knight, Dark Greffer, Cloak, New Aqua Dolphin, Jump Forward. I have those options. But for like initial normal summons, I don't want to have nine or more. I decided to go with six. Plus I guess you can't reinforce my army as give me a normal summon. So I definitely lowered it down and played more extenders. So I think this is definitely should go forward with Dark Wars. Next is Plaxo Zombie. You know it's part of the combo. Get the Needle Fiber. Bion Q, which I still think is way better than playing like the Black Rose engine, though it does give you a monster. You do have to play more bricks, such as playing two free DDRs and the two Black Rose Dragons. So, I decided to still go with Bion Q, because again, doing this go into F, F Don, uh, Don Dragster does let me just add a DDR to my hand if I don't have it. Next, we have the one Screet Knight, which can be, which always is summoned off of the Supplementation Knight. Or I can, just this, I can just use a normal summon if I have an extra War Extender, so it's still a really good card. And then we have Cloak, which you know you banish it to add the rank up. We're still playing free card by the grave, because basically every single hand trap in the game you go can hit this deck pretty hard. So you should always play free card by the grave with this card. And then we also play free drag down for the exact same reason. It hits the hand traps, and this card can also hit the Nibiru's, okay? Only problem you may have is that you, your opponent may accidentally draw the Nibiru after you take it out of hand. You know, and that can happen, but that's very rare to happen. The odds are like 1% or even less than that. So that's probably not going to happen. So I'll still say play drag down to the grave at free. Next, for a new tech card, I'm playing is Performer Power Popper Up. Name because, as I talked about previously, this tech has a lot of normal summons, so it did previously. So this is how I can kind of unbrick my hands. All right, halt, make it to extenders. For example, if I'm going first, you do know I'm playing nine hand traps. Hand traps don't really help me if I'm going first. And I may brick and I draw an extenders. I may not draw my normal summons and I can't get my combo. But I'll perform file popper up. Since I don't need my hand traps, I will just mill them off this card. And I can draw up to three cards. And odds all, I'll probably get one of my war extenders or something that gets me into my combo. So I want to be experimenting with this, but I think this is a really good pickup for Dark Wars to help unbrick your hand. Next, we're still playing two DDRs. We're playing Divine Sword, the one double or nothing, Horn or the Unicorn. We're playing Instant Fusion. It's still an always live War Extender option. And you see down extra as an all option to have planned. But I'll tell you about that when I get there in a moment. One Mirror Shield. We have the one card combo enabler, reinforcement army. One Sword of Seated. The one Rank Up. And then I decided to put in one Upstart Goblin. Mainly because, you know, I'm always trying to help with draw engine, help boost consistency. And since I was at 54 cards, after making this deck up, I decided to chuck an upset goblin, because why not? Helps me draw one card, and even though my opponent got 9,000, I can still OTK through that. 
given opportunity. So yeah, upstart at uh, one, very good card. Next, we'll follow on last hand trap. I'm playing three infinite permanents. Similar to Ash Blossom, it hits basically every meta out there, and this can actually stop the Zexal play, because as long as you chain it correctly, such as you don't activate Impermanence as soon as it's your turn, you wait for your opponent to try to activate Zexal, and then you chain Infinite Permanence, and you can shut down Zexal completely, and you'll be able to combo through and just take it out, because at that point, you'll only be at, what, 2,000 life points, so that's perfectly fine. Well, not 2,000 life points, but 2,000 attack. At that point, you're going to OTK easy if you totally have 10k attack, 8k damage, you won. S sweet and simple. And then, of course, Free Shade Brigadines. I had this cut down to two, but since I did cut out the Blue Mountain Butterfly, I did add one Photon Thrasher, and then also decided just to add one more Shade Brigadine, just to make it more consistent. And this card can always be live. It's not like if I had, let's say, a Super Quantum Red Layer, because that will always, Super Quantum Red Layer will never work with Photon Thrasher, because I only control one point, no monsters in my field, so they don't work together. But Photon Thrasher at free and Shape Brigading do always work together and can get you four combo because you can always special summon out in either order the whole Photon Thrasher and or Shape Brigading and you have your two warriors that way. Now quickly from my extra deck, I am playing Ghost Ogre main. This is exactly just for the Numeron matchup. I will side out probably Nibiru or Ash Blossom if I see the Numeron deck for engine coming out. And this can always just hit this field spell and you're golden after that. Next I'm playing free Cosmic Cyclone. You know, still... Spells and traps are really good in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. It's always how I break Mystic Mind, because Mystic Mind is a really hard card to kill with this deck. Dark Road No More, again, combo decks. And from the gate decks, this just shuts it down completely. Prohibition, this is now one of my outs to Nibiru. If I don't, if I know my opponents play Nibiru, I can always just side out, let's say, like, before I pop up, my up starts, want free of my hand traps, and just play Prohibition, and just call it off of that, and just not worry about Nibiru. Another thing we have... I was thinking about giving a Ghost Ogre. If they do get rid of Zexal, I don't think I'll play it after that. But I'll put it in exchange. That's just a no card that helps me deal with Nibiru matchups. And also hand traps. I can just take the hand trap with Nibiru out of the hand and give him some give him some like random card he can't use. And then Twin Twister for back row and Mystic Mine also. Then going from X check, we have Rajin that's off of Instafusion. And then I'm also playing the Limit Eyes with Strick. Because this can also be a no kind of like called by the grave. I can take out hand traps except for Nibiru, but so I decided to play this one because, you know, we don't, we're don't not locked by zones or the whole like, Link arrows anymore. So there's no reason not to play this. And I'm not playing Link, Link Rebo because Link Rebo won't really do much for my deck. Because I have Kaliuka, it'll shut down Link Rebo, and I'm left with like a 300 attack monster with no effect. That's going to hurt a lot. But yeah, moving my eyes straight, just putting it in defense mode. Still very good in my opinion. Next we have Borosaur for OT, help me go to OTKs. Doesn't really come up much, but as the option, I do have plenty of extenders. I can maybe do a Borosaur for Utopia. At 10k, and that's going to probably guarantee me game. Then I have high effects for the combo. I sell it for the combo. Phoenix and Unicorn. I'm not the big fan of these cards, but you know, I, I don't really know what else I could add to this deck as good text. You know, there's IP Mascarena, but you know, I don't really want to spend that, that much money on that card right now. So I, these are some more cheap tech cards to toss in here still, and I'll keep them in there. They do help me collect that one back row some random card opponent has to help me go for LTK, but it doesn't really come up that often. Then I play one core dragon, which I ha which also goes really good with Form of Synchron, because I can do Form of Synchron, draw one card, and as long as I have a level 4 extender, which is really easy to do with this deck, I can then go right into a core dragon, which is a 2400 body on my field, but on my, my turn I can discard one that's a pop a card and a filter really nice, and if this card does get destroyed, I do draw one card, and I can even just summon this straight off using a uh, high fabric effect, because it is a tuner. Then we have the John Dragster for the Vine Q, then we have the hoe. Kaliuga engine, we have the Kaliuga, we have the big eye, we have Utopia for OTK, we have the double, and we have the Kaiser. And that right there is kind of, well, that's exactly what my deck is right now. That's what I'm going to be messing with when I go to my locals, hopefully in a few days. You know, I'm very busy now with work, but, you know, if I do have some free time, I do like to try to experiment, experiment with this more. So with that, I hope you enjoy, enjoyed the video, and if you did, please leave a like on the video, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. kind of helps you support me, and it helps me make more videos for you to enjoy. Now, like the end of every single one of my videos, hope the rest of the week is blessed, and I hope I see you all again in the next video. And with that, I'm out.